Floods are one of the most destructive and deadliest disasters, particularly in Africa. It has killed millions of people during the last centuries, and it creates repeated and tragic loss of the few productive assets the poor do have, particularly livestock, trapping them in a continuous cycle of poverty. Local deforestation and the degradation of soils exacerbates droughts and all its negative consequences. And with global climate change progressing rapidly, droughts are predicted to increase even more in frequency, duration and severity. While there has been tremendous progress in feeding a still growing population adequately, famines have not disappeared from the face of the earth in the 21st century. In times of surplus production of food, the unprecedented wealth of many and global trade networks, it is inconceivable that we still allow a drought to turn into a famine. We talk about drought is a global crisis, but also we feel it can be an opportunity, an opportunity to move towards more sustainable land management practices. In a lecture series in Bonn, organized by the German Development Institute, researchers, practitioners and the greater public came together to discuss how the story of famine could be rewritten. Unfortunately, funding in, um, in the humanitarian crisis in which we are now is always coming too late. It's also this time comes too late. We have the early warning systems which have been improved over time. Yeah? I think they can even further improve, but funding very often is coming unfortunately too late. Uh, when it's late, it's very expensive. At the moment, water trucking is underway. Can you imagine bringing water in these areas by truck from one place to the other? It's extremely expensive. Of course, now there is no other way. We need this humanitarian assistance, but this is not only for the people suffering a complete misery, that's a disaster, that's ethical, uh, a real disaster. It is the most expensive way to help. It is far more, this humanitarian assistance is far more um, far more expensive than this prevention of future crisis, these structural adjustments uh, to this resilience. This investment into resilience would be a far better investment. Is that if we continue on our current track where we do very little to stop the causes of anthropogenic climate change and we do very little to help vulnerable countries adapt to the consequences of climate change, then we will have tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people displaced around the world before the end of this century, if we continue on the path that we're going. If we really want to think about resilience, first of all, what does that mean? And what would that look like at the individual level? And how can you say a household has really gotten there? Given that the existing, mostly reactive approach on famine proved to be inadequate for far too many, a new, more circular and proactive engagement with droughts seems critical. Where adequate preparedness, a timely response followed by restoration, constitutes resilience. Drought is a recurrent problem. It comes back. so. Before a drought is after a drought, and after a drought is before a drought. And the idea of drought cycle management is uh, to bring all um, activities, all policy measures, all um, risk disaster reduction measures, and even humanitarian uh, aid into a consistent policy framework. Countries have to have national drought policy. National drought policy based on the principles of risk reduction. To my knowledge, there are about 17 countries now. It used to be two, but now, just recently, there was a survey, and about 17 countries have national drought policy based on the principles of risk reduction. This is not enough. 
critical components seem to be early warning systems, water management, agriculture, market mechanisms, social protection, as well as the traditional emergency responses. Ten years ago, there was hardly any high-resolution data available for free. You had to pay a lot of money to invest. And uh, now you can access huge amounts of data with huge coverage, with a high temporal resolution. So the, the data acquisition is not a problem anymore. To be honest, I would say we are thinking too much into technology um, aspects of early warning systems. Uh, because at the end, the core thing is um, the perception by the people of the situation, of the early warning information, of the early warning message, and transferring this into, into action. Over 20 million people are threatened by drought in the Horn of Africa, Nigeria, Yemen and South Sudan. Disaster happens when, when people die, then media reports. Uh, media, to a certain extent, is still the same attitude. It's not really a major event to report for them unless their disaster takes place out of drought and that uh, many people become casualties to the drought. 680,000 people have fled the drought in Somalia. In Africa, which already has a lot of problems to deal with, um, climate change is just another one on top of all that. And um, changes in precipitation in Africa mean that there's um, parts of Africa particularly are impacted by um, a reduction in precipitation. The Horn, Horn of Africa and the Sub-Sahara being, being uh, particularly vulnerable. Threats and challenges uh, can be overcome by investments in agricultural water management. Water really can make a difference in achieving both adaptation to climate change and achieving the sustainability development goals. Storage and access to water reduces reliance on erratic rainfall and drought. Water scarcity can also mean underinvestment. So it's not only this physical availability, but having access, having the infrastructure is one key requirement for increasing resilience and adaptation to climate change in agriculture. Is this long experience what we have, the 20, 30, 40 years of, of trying to bring uh, innovations to farmers, make them adopt always in the same way, yeah. develop something here, bring it to there, and then find out that it was not adapted. Are we not making the same mistake now, even if we have something simple like a drought tolerant or drought resistant uh, uh, crop or variety? Yes, and I, I think you're right. The bigger community of research have learned from it, and that's why we are getting pushes to our more of innovation system type of thinking. Whereas you don't no longer have this one way supply driven of technology, but try to bring stakeholders together and say, hey, before even we bring a variety, is it really what people are looking for? Research should be uh, linked to, uh, to results, to lessons learned uh, for programs and not just uh, take place for the sake of, of gaining new insights, uh, not going always on a, some kind of trial and error by implementation, but better by research and, uh, and by uh, putting together different sector activities. 12 million hectares of productive land get lost every year because of man-made activities. It's time that we neutralize this 12 million hectares of degradation to make land productive, but also recover almost 2 billion hectares of land, which has already been degraded over the years. The food price crisis was, was one of the few occasions where instability at the level of world market was higher than instability at the level of national markets. But we shouldn't forget that usually instability, the price variability at the national markets is much higher than at the, uh, at the world market. So world markets indeed must be an important buffer for all national markets as a reinsurance to both to, level, uh, to, to cut 
price slumps but also price increases. In countries like Ethiopia, where drought and shocks are the underlying factors uh, defining livelihoods and survival, social protection is one way to address this challenge and in that sense this topic is very very important. We know nutrition, um, food and nutrition uh, security is a, is a phenomena with, which has very different dimensions and causes. And that means, or Im the implication is that if we want to do something about it, we have to address several, uh, all of these somehow simultaneously. And that means in practice a kind of multi-sectoral approach. And we have heard about that also. And um, but what does it mean in practice? The fact that nutrition, social protection, resilience require a multi-sectoral approach uh, means there should be a way that the existing institutions are empowered to work together, to collaborate, to develop this trust relationship in between and across sectors. Mm. and make sure that implementation is going as smooth as possible. Foreign experts often have a different um, definition of risk as compared to the people whom they are supposed to serve in their projects. And out of, this, out of the clash of these different perceptions of risk, new problems may evolve. We need to come to a broader picture of risk. Um, a risk that is not only caused by climatic changes or by, by um, variations of precipitation, but risks that do also involve um, violent conflict, markets, the political system. Despite a growing understanding how to proactively engage with droughts, a widespread application is still missing. Crises-led responses remain the norm rather than the exception and active drought management is too often overlooked until a crisis unfolds. The investment in the strategic recovery of social and ecological systems is not given the priority it deserves. Our planet remains with enormous disparities between continents, countries and social classes, where the technology, the finance, the knowledge and who knows, even the moral obligation exists to make famines one part of history that ended during our lifetimes. <laughs>